Hello, welcome to 15 Minutes in the Forest. My name is Adam Downing with Virginia Cooperative Extension. Today we're in a different kind of forest, not the rural forest that we've been in for a lot of our segments. This, as you can see, is a both urban and a little bit more of a rural. This is just kind of a hedgerow, and we're going to be talking about a unfortunate, this is a depressing sort of thing here that we're going to be talking about today, but it's very important. And so I hope that you will watch this and key in on it and be an ambassador moving forward with the topic that we have today. And I'll give you one hint for what the topic is. Winchester has become a little bit famous for this in the past year and a half, two years. And my colleague has also become famous and this has consumed his uh, professional life. Hi, I'm Mark Sutphin. I am a horticulture extension agent in Frederick County, Virginia, serving the northern Shenandoah Valley. And we're here this afternoon to talk about spotted lanternfly. It is a new invasive pest, uh, insect pest, that we've been dealing with in the Winchester, Frederick County area since 2018. It has actually uh, been in North America since 2014. It was first discovered in Berks County, Pennsylvania, up near Reading and Allentown, Pennsylvania. This pest is native to Asia, uh, multiple countries in Asia, has been a pest in Asia, in South Korea and Japan as well. And unfortunately, we are now dealing with it as a pest in North America. This one's a little bit difficult because it's a pest in numerous, uh, numerous aspects. It's a pest to agriculture, most uh, of most concern is our grape crops, our wine grapes, vineyard uh, setting is, is most at risk with this pest. Also our stone fruits, peaches, cherries, possibly uh, palm fruits, apples are of some concern. It's a forest pest because this insect likes uh, black walnut, it likes maples and some other host species that are common in the forest setting or even for forest products. And it becomes a nuisance pest in the home landscape. And we're at a site right now that's pretty urban. It's the back of a retail center in Winchester, Frederick County area. And uh, we're standing alongside a row of red maples, or we actually believe they may be a red silver cross Acer X Freemanii is, is our best guess right now. Um, and these trees are full of spotted lanternflies. We're in the adult life stage right now. It's the end of September uh, time frame when we're recording. And we've been seeing the adults uh, courting, mating, and laying egg masses now uh, for about two weeks. So mid-September is when we start seeing egg masses first appear. These adults will last and live until we have some uh, pretty good uh, colder temperatures below freezing in say November timeframe. Uh, they will lay eggs up until then. So this time of year is actually some of the uh, riskiest time of year as far as transporting this insect. They are a great hitchhiker at all life stages, but with gravid, pregnant, ready to lay eggs, uh, females, or the egg mass itself, if you transport that to a new area, you have the potential to start a new population. So be mindful of that. Check vehicles, check materials and goods that are being stored outside. Anything that sits outside for a period of time in this egg laying uh, time of year has the potential to have an egg mass on it. So what we're looking at here is a pair of adult spotted lanternfly. It's actually a male and female pair. Um, this time of year, we see the males courting the females. He will flutter around her, flutter his wings, and then they will actually uh, mate. And um, he's actually fluttering his wings there just a little bit, not, not giving us much of a show. But this is the typical uh, actual view you will see of an adult spotted lanternfly. Uh, if you look online and a lot of the paraphernalia that's been prepared, it has them with their wings spread wide open. You see that bright red, uh, deep orange underwing. You rarely see that out in the natural setting. Um, you typically see them as they are posed right now with the wings folded over their backs. 
just under this branch where the adults are are some fresh egg masses. Those are this year's egg masses. They have been laid in the last week or two, and that is what will provide us our 2021 population of spotted lanternfly. This is the pair that we were just looking at, um, the male and female. You can see a bit of difference in, in size. Uh, the female is larger. She is well-fed and also gravid, full of eggs, ready to lay eggs. Um, you can see uh, the female also at the very end of her abdomen. She has red coloration. The male is only black, and that is another way to tell them apart, male versus female. Here is the female. She has her wings open. That's a defense mechanism showing off that bright red coloration that you often see in a lot of the media postings and information. Uh, she is now closing those wings back up, folding them over her back. We're looking at more spotted lanternfly egg masses. Um, Again, we're in a maple tree here in Winchester, Frederick County area. This cluster of egg masses, there's actually three separate masses there. Two are fresh. Uh, they've been laid this fall, the September timeframe of 2020. This one in the center is an old egg mass from the previous year. Uh, the coating has worn off of that. The eggs hatched back in late April or early May, and the nymphs have emerged and are what are providing us our current adult population. So if you see egg masses like this on whatever it may be, plant material, a tree, um, again, we were talking about them as hitchhikers and they can, they can move on equipment, vehicles, uh, materials that have been stored outside, and um, you would want to actually, they, they can be scraped off into rubbing alcohol or uh, hand sanitizer, but I honestly find it just easy to come along and I will smash them with the back of my fingernail and that renders them um, dead and no longer viable and now they will not hatch out in the spring. All right, so some additional shots here. Um, spotted lanternfly is a piercing sucking insect. It is a phloem feeder. Their mouth parts are much like a straw. They jab those into the plant host and drink the sap out of the tree, host plant, whatever they're feeding on. And with that comes a lot of sugary excrement that we call honeydew. It's a sticky, uh, again, sweet, sugary, liquid product that is their waste, and it literally rains down out of these trees where they are feeding. And on that substance of honeydew, you get sooty mold growing. That's a dark fungal growth, and it does not harm the plant itself other than the fact it can uh, block photosynthesis from happening on some of these heavy-coated leaves you can see really how dark they are, how much sooty mold is growing on the honeydew that's, that's landed on those leaves. Another side effect of all of the honeydew, that sweet sugary substance that the spotted lanternfly are excreting, are an increase in visits to that area by uh, wasps, hornets, yellow jackets, bees, even butterflies will come and feed on that honeydew. They will also feed on oozing sap from all of the wounds that the spotted lanternfly have created on, on the host tree. I'm hoping to showcase some of the research and still some of the questions that we don't know about this insect and are trying to figure out. Uh, one of the studies is a plot to my left. We are looking at different host species for spotted lanternfly, trying to understand what species it prefers at various times of the year and, and throughout its nymphal to adult life stage that's being recorded on this pad that I have in hand. Also beside me, um, trying to understand best trapping methods, efficacy trials are being done 
in this area as well with different insecticides and how we can best manage this new invasive insect pest. Okay, well, I want to say thank you so much to my friend and colleague, Mark, who has uh, really quite literally dedicated much of the last two years of his life to this. And again, we want to uh, ask you as homeowners, as landowners, as citizens of this great commonwealth to please keep an eye out for this. Right now, it's only known to be in, in Frederick County and, and just a little bit outside of the border. Is that right, in one place? Exactly, just in the western edge of Clark County. So we strongly suspect that it is in other parts of the state, um, but we need eyes and ears out there. Maybe not ears, these things don't make much noise, but please be on the lookout for these. As we uh, wrap this up, let me bring in a, just a picture of the fresh honeydew. This is, um, if you feel it, it's sticky. I'm not going to taste it, but it's probably sweet. And that's what it looks like before it gets to that sooty mold. And finally, as per my custom, I'll uh, give a tip of the hat to give a shout out to the Virginia Forest Landowner Education Program. And for those of you who have been uh, following um, landowner education programs in Virginia, you know this hat, you know the logo. And it is a partnership undertaking uh, led by Jennifer Gagnon at Virginia Tech and we work very closely with her. We're thankful for her coordination of that program and also thankful for the many partners, Department of Forestry, Department of Wildlife Resources, and others, Forest Service, who contribute financially and a lot of uh, in-kind uh, resources. So thank you all. Have a good day. Bye.